Today's project is a timing circuit. It starts when I push this button over here and it stops when this beam is broken. And I was making it with, for example, uh, a race in mind where some people are going to race down a track and you want to know the exact time. So you can start the clock here and when they break the beam on the other end, the clock stops and you can know within a very high precision how long it took them to run the course. Let's take a close-up look at the circuit and see what's going on. This is the start button and it's merely just a mechanical switch. On this side I have the ground wire and through the ground wire I have a 330 ohm resistor. I have a 10k picofarad capacitor runs through the switch. A million ohm resistor going to the power. The red side over here is the power. And then the blue which is going to one of my GPIO pins. And when I press this, the GPIO pin will detect the change and it will start the clock running. So this is the begin switch. And this is the finish side of the circuit. When something breaks this beam, it will stop the clock from running. And on this side, I have two components that are significant. One of them is this photodiode and from the negative side, the negative is this pin way down here. From the negative, I have a 330 ohm resistor. It goes through this photodiode. And on the other side, I have my GPIO pin, which is going to detect it. I have a capacitor just to give it a little bump when the, when the situation changes, when the electrical situation changes. And a 1 mega ohm resistor uh, feeding that point right there. So that when the diode is blocked, it will shut off and suddenly the input to this yellow wire will change. And on this side, all it is an LED, obviously. 330 ohms on this side and then I'm powering it from a GPIO pin on this side. And when it's operating, the photodiode will see the light from this side. The photodiode will be open and when it's broken, it will cut the photodiode and again, this pin will detect it. So let's see how this works. Let's run our program. Run module. Okay, it's waiting for input. Let's start a race. Timer starts on this side, and here somebody's going to cross the finish line, and boom, stops. So we have timer ends. The distance is 100 meters, which I entered into the program earlier. Uh, the time was 4.3946 seconds, and in order to cover 100 meters in that time, you would have to be moving at about 22.755 meters per second. So that's all right. Well, let's talk about some extensions we could do to this. For example, we could replace this mechanical switch over here with another set of optical sensors and that way when the beam on this side was broken it would start the clock running and the beam on the other side was broken it would stop the clock. So we could set this up at our starting line for a race and this at the ending finish line and when someone passes through here the clock starts and when they pass through that it stops and you would have a very accurate timing. Uh, we could replace these with, for example, a laser and say a photo transistor to make it a lot more convenient because that laser would go all the way across the track and make that very easy. And again, same on this side, uh, you could replace the mechanical switch with something like that. So yeah, you could uh, time uh, it, pretty much anything that will pass through the beams, break the beams, um, and could be quite interesting. This is the software behind the hardware and it's just a program to measure speed. Uh, it's going to measure between two beam interrupts. I cheated a little bit. I used one hardware switch and one beam interrupt just because I didn't have the hardware. Uh, very similar setups though. And my inputs are from pin 7 and pin 11. Those are using board numberings. I'm using pin 6 as ground numbering if you saw my other videos. Very similar stuff. Um, and the infrared LEDs are meant to be powered from pin 13 and 15. Obviously the switch doesn't need that, but it, we, I'm using one of them for the infrared diode. Inf import the GPIO as typical as usual so we can use the pin numbering. Import the time function because I need sleep and I need to use the timer. Down here, GPIO board mode and my input list. I'm going to use two inputs. I'm going to put them in this list just to make it a little bit cleaner. I'm going to use two outputs, 13 and 15. I'm going to put them in the output list. And that way when I do my GPIO setup, I just call the input list, which is 7 and 11. 
and set those as input, and then my output list 13 and 15 is out. My distance I'm setting is 100 meters. I'm assuming we're having a 100 yard dash here. I need to keep my start time and my end time, and of course the difference between those is the total time it took to run the race. And then I've got a variable to tell me whether I'm reading the sample, whether the sample's begun reading or ended, which is important. My first function here is to start the timer. So when the first interrupt is hit, it starts the timer running and it globalizes the start time and the reading variables. The GPIO input on pin 7, if the photodiode is blocked, or in this case the switch is triggered, I'm going to save the start time. I'm going to go grab the start time out of time.time. .time. Then I'm going to print that my timer has started and I'm going to set reading to zero which tells me that I've got a reading in process. I've got a sample in process. And down here is the next function. This is the end timer function. So I've got to end the timer when the next beam is cut. So if somebody has finished the race, the beam is cut, and I need to capture that information. So I globalized end time and reading. And if my input on pin 11 is telling me it's been triggered, uh, the photodiode has been blocked. I grab the end time from time dot time. I print timer ends, which we saw that message, and then I say reading is one. So the reading is done. I'm done looking for inputs. Here are my two interrupts. Here's the pin seven interrupt, and I'm going to call start timer when the, there's an interrupt detected on seven, and start timer was this routine up here. And the other interrupt down here is on pin 11, and I'm going to call end timer, which is this routine, when that interrupt is triggered. Notice over here I've changed my bounce times. Uh, the bounce time of 200 is because I'm using a mechanical switch. Normally if you're using a, an optical switch, it's not as important, or if the times are less, you kind of have to fiddle around with that if you're going to use mechanical devices. But that's why it's different this time. And then down here, I've got, uh, this is the main software, if you will, the main routine. And the first thing I do is I turn the output list to true. So I'm going to turn both my optical LEDs on or my uh, lasers on. And then I'm going to sleep for a second to allow them to come to full power, make sure I don't get a false hit at the beginning. And then I'm going to run this little loop. And all it's going to do is it's going to keep repeating this waiting and sleeping as long as the reading is set to zero. In other words, I'm waiting for the race to start. And as long as that's looping, it means nothing's really happened. When I get an interrupt, I'm gonna jump up here to one of my routines and execute that. But otherwise, I'm just gonna keep looping and looping. Once the reading has been set to one, in other words, the race is over, it falls out of this loop. The timer equals the difference between the end time and the start time. The speed is the distance divided by the time, which I saved up here in timer. And then I'm going to print the distance, the time, and the speed. And then I'm going to do my GPIO cleanup, turn off the LEDs, reset everything back to normal. And that's pretty much it. So we've been building on some of these other things. Yes, this is more complex than the other ones. But you can see the building blocks as we go along. And this is how all programs are written, one piece at a time. Okay, well that's it for today. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.